It's no secret that G.I. Joe classified as a toy line is something that gets fans of the old Real American Hero franchise excited. And I have talked in the recent past about optional upgrade sets that can be applied to these figures, such as those produced by Gridiron Studios. Thus, when you combine these gorgeously purposed character loadout kits with the customization ability of a fellow hobbyist, one can't help but smile just a little when growing the ranks of these figures on your shelves by such means. Let's have a look at this customized G.I. Joe classified Footloose right here and now. While it's always appreciated, yet never expected, it is heartwarming to receive a package in the mail from a friendly name that you recognize. In this case, I had ordered other related items from Gridiron Studios, and my good friend of this channel, Dreadnought Ryan, graciously agreed to reship these items to me north of the border. As such, I was pleasantly surprised to not only find my order of Gridiron Studios character loadout kits that were purposed for other figures in this parcel, but to also see some of Ryan's completed handiwork when he included this 6 inch or 112 scale classified custom footloose also as part of the package. And while I am familiar in general with the process of paintwork and modifications, I'll let Dreadnought Ryan give you all of the inside scoop regarding this figure. Thanks Ken. In the customizer community, we often talk about recipes. Today, I'm going to give you my recipe for classified footloose. The reason I started doing custom figures is I enjoy the creativity, of just seeing what I can really accomplish when I put my mind to it. So for this particular recipe, it started out with an amazing kit from Gridiron Studios, classified flint figure, some great Vallejo paint, and Millie Putt. Thanks, Toy Ploy. For the mustache, I used the two-part epoxy Millie Putt to mix together. So when it starts out, it's almost like Play-Doh, but it will harden into like a, a plaster type of material, which allows you then to paint it up. I used some dental picks to give it the mustache texture and then let it dry. From there, I took the rest of the flint buck, heated up the arms and legs so that I could remove them and slide down the web gear that flint came with. I knew that I wanted to use these pieces for Footloose's web gear. So once I was able to remove the vest, I used my X-Acto knife to cut off any of the pieces that I didn't want and leave the ones that I did. From there I used a green base coat and then started adding the forest camo. If you want to start trying to do camo paint just go to Google and look up different camouflage pictures. Then mix and match what you like or what you don't like. Then just start adding those grounds, greens, tans, blacks so you find that pattern that you like best. And that's what I did for this particular footloose. Once I found a pattern that I liked and I felt happy with the paint I then added those same colors to the gridiron pack to make sure that they all tied together. From there I used some Mod Podge Matte mixed with a little water and that helps seal the paint in so that you don't have to worry about it chipping off. From there I painted up the mustache and then I assembled the figure all back together. I was very happy when it was completed and I thought it turned out better than what I would actually thought it would or what I thought I could do. So when I shared with Ken the desert flint figure that I made I knew that when he was talking about Footloose that I was going to send him this figure as well. Because as much fun as it is to create these figures and have them in the collection, it's funner when you can share them with your friends. So I'm happy to say that I was able to share this with a very good friend of mine, and I'm glad that this figure has found a new home with an owner who appreciates it. Thanks again to everyone who supports the Island of Misfit Toy Collectors, and then all my friends on Facebook and Instagram, and especially Ken. Thanks everyone. With the customization on the base figure done, and once you've added the Gridiron Studios Foot Soldier character loadout, you're treated with a wonderful homage to the version 1 1985 release of the G.I. Joe A Real American Hero Footloose character. And of course, he looks great as a potentially permanent stand-in for Footloose in my G.I. Joe classified collection. Looking at both the front and the back of the figure, you can tell that Gridiron has given us a rather complete looking loadout, such that we can use our mind's imagination to see how we want to place each of the accessories onto the figure. By comparison to the vintage 1985 release of Footloose, the colors, weapons choice, and overall feel of the character goes a long way to pretty much being what I envision to be a G.I. Joe classified version of him. Even if the character 
does receive an official release later on, it'll be a bit of a decision on my end as to whether or not I opt for what Hasbro would have to offer at the time. I say this because I have often simply chosen to keep the third-party versions of figures in my collection even when official ones come out, something that I've done time and time again in my Transformers Masterpiece collection. Yes, this custom does use the flint body and head, but with the added mustache and helmet largely covering the figure's face and head, it's not too obvious even when you place him right next to flint that is the same base figure. Looking at him next to my other standard issue G.I. Joe classified figures, he looks like he fits right in, and if anything, the green camo paint detailing even makes him stand out a little bit more than the rest. At the end of the day though, he adds to my growing cast of characters, thus fleshing out the ranks and is all the more special, being a gift from a friend. This is a look at the figure next to my other items upgraded with Gridiron Studios character loadouts, all of which I've shown before in past videos. It's obvious that this company does have our interests in mind when it comes to either giving us more gear and weapons to enhance existing characters like what's been done here for Duke and to also give us options for separate characters altogether to bolster our G.I. Joe classified shelf presence as a whole. To date, Gridiron Studios has always been generous with their time and I have interviewed them before on this channel and we've also seen them hang out with fellow fans and collectors while discussing future releases such as the times that they have gone on other channels such as a toy kind of mood. As a last bit of acknowledgement, I just want to give my thanks to Dreadnought Ryan of the Island of Misfit Toy Collectors for his ongoing generosity and continued support. Be sure to give him a subscription on his channel, the link of which is in the description section below. I have also included the link to Gridiron Studios' website as well. With that, special thanks to my Patreon supporters and channel members whose names can also be found in the description section of this video. Visit patreon.com slash toy connections or click the join button next to my channel name if you'd like to give this channel some extra support. Also, if you enjoyed this video, check out some of my other content here. Subscribe if you already haven't, press that like button to spread this video to more viewers and share it with your friends. Otherwise, yo Joe, and I will see you again soon with some more of my favorite toys. Thanks again and take care.